Good evening. This is Rocket Shop, Big Heavy World's local Vermont music radio hour. Every Wednesday from 8 to 9 p.m. on 105.9 FM The Radiator, W-O-M-M-L-P Burlington. Local musicians come on and chat with me and share their music on the radio. I'm your host, Genevieve Rossi, and tonight I have the pleasure of welcoming George Nostrand. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm great, thanks. And we usually just start with a song. If you want to introduce your song title and go right in, we could talk about it after. Sure. I'm going to play a song called Too Far to Fall. It's off my George's Back Pocket album. And uh, unfortunately for Bob, it's not one of the happy songs. So. <laughs> Could be happy, you never know. If I thought my car would make it, I would drive on out of here. Leave everything and go tonight for a future so unclean. Maybe I'd head south, probably head out west. Might even go to Canada, just pray for the best. Well, I need my bed, but I don't think I want to sleep in it. I hold this road now I find that I'm too deep in it I can't turn around I can't look down where I'm standing it's too far to fall I can't go back I'm off the track where I'm standing it's too far to fall too far to fall If I thought myself a ticket, wouldn't even say goodbye. Leave here tonight without a tear in my eye. Maybe I find pleasure, surely I find pain. Might even find myself and try to turn around again. Well, I need my bed, but I don't think I wanna sleep in it. Yes, I hold this road. Now I find that I'm too deep in it Can't turn around, I can't look down At where I'm standing, it's too far to fall Can't go back, I'm off the track At where I'm standing, it's too far to fall Too far to fall Drive on out of here Leave everything and know tonight For a future so unclear Maybe I'd head south Probably head out west Might even go to Mexico Just to pray for the best Well, I need my bed But I don't think I'm gonna sleep in it As I hold this road And now I find That I'm too deep in it Turn around, I can't look down at where I'm standing, it's too far to fall. Can't go back, I'm off the track of where I'm standing, it's too far to fall. Too far to fall. Too far to fall, 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 too far to fall. Um, so that was Too Far to Fall by George Nostrand. And George, um, so what I want to ask, what kind of genre would you describe your music before I put a genre on to you? Um, you know, I've, I've played a lot of different stuff. Um, I think it, it does fall under Americana. You know, I play folk, rock, blues, bluegrass, um, jam music, a little bit of everything. I've even dabbled in country a little bit. Don't tell anybody, though. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I think you've got a lot of different influences, so I could see it going a lot of different ways. And as you play more, I'll probably see even more. But what kind of, when you started music, I know you said you came to Vermont 20 years ago. How long have you been playing music? Um, I've been playing music most of my life. I started uh, with piano. I played piano in grade school and actually all the way through high school. 
Um, and interestingly enough, I'm playing keyboards in a band now, uh, which is kind of fun doing something different than what I normally do um, on guitar and everything. So uh, I didn't pick up the guitar till I was like 19 or so. Um, and uh, I haven't put it down since. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. And you're from Rutland originally. So did you actually, drive up here? To I grew up in Bellows Falls. <laughs> okay. And um, yep. Yeah. And then I moved around a bunch. I actually lived here in Burlington um, in about 1995, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's vague. <laughs> <laughs> the time in Burlington. But well, uh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I've lived in Vermont most of my life. Absolutely. And do you think that the music you make is kind of reflective of Vermont or do you think it's kind of your own thing? No, I think it's definitely reflective of Vermont. I mean, my my first album was a, a solo project that ended up having 20 guest musicians on it. <laughs> and uh, there's so many great musicians here in Vermont and uh, a lot in the Rutland area. Um, and so you can't help but being influenced by um, all the folks that are around here. Um, got a lot of, you know, big brother musicians that I've learned from. And um, there's a lot of musicians in the Rutland area that I get to play with, so... Yeah, absolutely. And I know you're in some bands. You have the Misguided Angels, and you've also con done your own solo stuff. Mm -hmm. What do you kind of prefer? Do you like to just stand here with a guitar and be yourself, or do you like to have a whole band behind <laughs> no, I you? No, <laughs> standing here with a guitar. <laughs> this is actually, believe it or not, I was, I was telling these guys earlier, I, I, I got nervous earlier today, which doesn't happen to me a lot because <laughs> I, I, I do play a fair amount. I'm, I'm fortunate to be able to do that. Um, but I kind of wanted to do something like this to kind of put myself out there and play my own music solo acoustic uh, but it terrifies me so <laughs> I'd much rather be playing with a band behind me <laughs> yeah you got a lot of other people to defer it to but um do you you write all of your own music or do you have collaborative collaborative efforts on that too um I, I've written most of my music uh on the Misguided Angels album uh, my friend Lisa wrote a couple of the songs and then we covered a song by uh for Jen's uh, singer songwriter Josh Brooks Oh, interesting. And uh, so he's, I'm a big fan of his and super nice guy. And uh, so we, we stole one of his with permission. And <laughs> <laughs> do you want to play us another song? Just sure. do some more? Yeah, yeah, awesome. So this is also from my uh, George's Back Pocket album. Uh, it's called The Shape of Things Today. Take a drug to take the edge off of the life that I am living. I take another drug that takes the edge off of the drug that takes the edge off of the life I'm living. I hit the bottle, take the edge off of the drug that takes the edge off of the drug that takes the edge off of the life that I am living. Slow down, I'd have to look around and see the shape that things are in. So I can't come down, it only make me frown, and make me feel like I should give in. Guys and compromise the evening news. I watch the rays while the rich get paid and the poor get the blues. As we get dumber every day, giving our power away like we got nothing left to lose. I can't slow down, I'd have to look around. Shape the things are in. Oh, I can't come down. You'll only make me frown. Make me feel like I should give in.
take a drug to take the edge off of the life that I am living. I take another drug that takes the edge off of the drug that takes the edge off of the life I'm living. I hit the bottle, take the edge off of the drug that takes the edge off of the drug that takes the edge off of the life that I am living. Slow down, I'd have to look around, see the shape the things are in. Oh, I can't come down, it only make me frown, make me feel like I should give in. Another yeah. uplifting tune for you. Yeah, like that <laughs> makes me, yeah. <laughs> so on that, um, when you write, do you have specific things that you write about? Are you the kind of person who writes about their own life, or do you just kind of come up with theoretical scenarios and write about those? Yeah, I've I kind of have uh, gotten to the point where I've, I kind of see the, the songs as having almost like three lives. Like, I write them as they come to me, um, and I'm not really the type of person that can just sit down and write a song. I kind of have to have something inspire me to write about it and often it's related to my own life um and then you know there's the uh, it tends to be like after i've written it it often has another meaning <laughs> that i kind of read into it afterwards and then then later on i figure out kind of what it really means so it's, <laughs> and then you it's kind of this people. unfolding <laughs> process of <laughs> yeah uh, you got other people projecting their meanings on yeah well, exactly so. yeah absolutely and you've got written i think three albums total you've put out with one with yep. a band and two by yourself do you have any more in the works what is your kind of um i released a single production? earlier this year mm -hmm. um and i'm uh the funny thing is i have a rehearsal recording studio but i've been so busy with that i haven't been working on my own stuff <laughs> Um, but I was very excited. Actually, it was on um, Phil Henry's record that he just put out. Uh, he's a singer-songwriter from Rutland. Um, and I got the opportunity to sing on a couple of the songs um, on that album. So that was that was pretty exciting for me. Absolutely. And when you're recording and you do, do you do all of your own mixing and everything? You have a recording studio. so. Well, no, the funny thing is I just, I'm the guy who, you know, vacuums the floor and cleans up I don't, I don't i'm not the real engineer i have a i'm fortunate that i have a lot of good friends who know how to do that type of thing um, so i know just enough to be dangerous uh, <laughs> i was doing a podcast for a while for the rutland herald and that was that was about the extent of my knowledge on Very stuff like that cool. And I want to talk a little bit about the sound space um, sure. that you run. Yeah. Is you so you run the studio space and you have other artists come in? Obviously, is that something like that is your primary gig, or do you do that on the side of other things? And is it like because a big part of your life is obviously music, so you get to manifest that into the space? Yeah, it's um, well uh, up until um, the pandemic, I, I worked for the Rutland Herald, um, and then I was furloughed um, in March. Um, and just actually let go officially a couple weeks ago. Um, but so I've had the whole summer um, that I've been working on um, the project at a sound space. And uh, uh, it's, it's been a blessing in that sense that I've had the time to really work on things. Um, a sound space is kind of interesting because it's, it's not really a formal, traditional recording studio. Um, it's first and foremost, it's a rehearsal space. So bands can come in, rent time, and... Uh, we have a full PA set up there and equipment so they can rehearse, kind of plug and play rehearsal is what I call it. Um, and then it's kind of more of like a DIY recording. So if they know what they're doing or they have somebody who knows what they're doing, they can set up um, and record stuff. And uh, so I've had a couple of the bands um, working on albums and working on songs, releasing them. And then I've had other engineers come in and do small projects there. Um, That's we also awesome. did... Uh, um, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, we yeah. also did uh, um, a big thing was we did a bunch of videos uh, because, again, when COVID shut everything down, uh, all my mus musicians were basically out of work and um, in need to both play and also make a little bit of money. So um, we started doing live shows in-house. Um, and so we would uh, bring bands in. Um, we, we were not live streaming. We were producing the videos. So we were filming them and then editing the audio and the video and then releasing the video on uh, Patreon. Awesome. Um, 
check that out on Patreon, everybody. Yeah. Thank you so much for providing a space like that because that's like the kind of thing Vermont musicians need because this is a time when totally. there's not too many gigs and you need to have something open to you. And creating videos or recording spaces that are still open is really awesome. So awesome yeah. job on that. That's really great. And um, I was wondering when you're doing your own kind of recording stuff like that, when you're in the studio, what's that process look like for you? Do you sit down, have everything mapped out already, or you kind of go with the flow? Because you have your own space. I guess you can kind of just do whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's actually funny. I was listening to my music on the way up here, which I don't normally do, <laughs> <laughs> but I knew I was going to play a couple songs for my album. And um, usually I go in with kind of a three quarters of something finished. Um, you know, I'll have the basic chord progression. I'll have a couple verses and, and a part of a chorus or something like that. Um, and then... Uh, it also depends on whether it's more of a band album or more of like a solo, you know, type of project. But uh, um, so it it really kind of varies. And uh, I've been again, I've been really fortunate to work with um, Southview Arts, which is um, down in Middletown Springs as a studio. And then uh, my friend Phil Henry, um, who's a musician and has also done um, recording projects for me and uh, Mount Hollywood Studios. So we actually have some really good studios um, down in our neck of the woods. Awesome. And when you're kind of recording, have you come out with anything since COVID? When was your single released? Uh, it was released around that time. It was around okay. March, yeah. Yeah, have you been writing anything, doing anything since that, like, music-wise? I want to see, have, have you noticed a change in your own writing and everything? <laughs> I, I have been writing. I don't have anything that I've finished, per se. Um, it's kind of funny, actually. I'm, I'm in a little battle with, uh, with Phil Henry, who I've mentioned a couple of times. He's <laughs> kind of my producer and engineer, and... Uh, uh, I have a bunch of older songs that I wanted to record, and he's he he won't let me. <laughs> he wants me to write Make new material. New <laughs> so um, I have I have some uh, stuff that I'm dubbing around with, but yeah. Well, you said you're the kind of person who needs like inspiration to write. So I mean, in an age where we're all kind of stuck inside most of the time, I guess it can be difficult. But yeah. did you yeah. do a lot of live performance stuff before COVID happened? Was that a big part of your music? Yeah, life? I did. I was again. I feel really fortunate. Um, you know, uh, I started playing, uh, I played my first professional gig actually down in Providence, Rhode Island, but then uh, I came up here to Burlington. I started playing uh, uh, at this place called Java Love, um, which I think is now uh, uh, the coffee shop up there that everybody plays at. Uh, I forget the name of it, but, and, uh, but, uh, and then I played a couple, couple gigs at some different places here. Um, and, uh, I got I got to the point where I played over a hundred gigs um, in in a year plus working full time. Wow! Um, so, uh, like I said, I feel really fortunate. And Vermont's such a fun place to play because yeah. you could be playing a farmers market one night and then a restaurant and a bar, and you could be playing <laughs> a parade or you could be playing, you know, all the, all these different random places. Yeah. What uh, is your favorite type of venue? I was gonna ask that next, like in Vermont or just anywhere. What is your favorite place to perform? There, there was a, a festival called Harvest Moon Festival, and it was out in Middletown Springs, and it was literally off the grid. It was way, way out on this on this road, and this couple owned the property there, and they did uh, every year on Labor Day that they did a concert there, um, and I've got about six drawers full of T-shirts from uh, <laughs> all the different festivals uh, that I helped out with and played there. But uh, it was just any any time you get to play outside, I think it's yeah. really beautiful in Vermont, unless. It's freezing cold and raining like it was a couple <laughs> weeks ago when I was at the farmer's market. <laughs> yes, unless it's winter or yeah. fall or spring. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think the opportunity, Vermont has such a cool summer music scene, you know. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Do you want to play me another song? Sure. Oh, I can awesome. Do that. Thanks. Play one one upbeat song from Bob here. I want to, I want to, <laughs> I want to make sure you get tunes. through the night here. <laughs> Someday I'll meet you, baby, on the other side Rivers deep, rivers wide Someday I'll meet you, baby, on the other side, on the other side Used to search for inner meaning And all the spaces in between 
patient than it comes to me in a smile or in a dream. The river's deep, the river's wide. Someday I'll meet you, baby, on the other side. The river's deep, the river's wide. Someday I'll meet you, baby, on the other side, on the other side. And place your faith in destiny Cause every little thing that happens every single day You know was meant to be Rivers deep, rivers wide Someday I'll meet you baby on the other side Rivers deep, rivers wide Someday I'll meet you baby deep, the river's wide, someday I'll meet you baby on the other side, the river's deep, the river's wide, someday I'll meet you baby on the other side, on the other side. that one called that one was called the river and that's river. actually uh, technically unreleased uh, that hasn't been Ooh. on an album so very um, special <laughs> <laughs> but see i don't have it recorded because phil won't let me record the old ones i hope he's <laughs> listening to this by the way <laughs> yes i'll have to show it to him and say let him play these um, so when you said you toured a lot around vermont and played a lot of places have you toured other places around the country or are you only a vermonter or um i places? actually have played in other places around the country i i worked in mental health um for a number of years, and uh, as part of that, I, I did uh, public speaking and training. Um, so, interestingly enough, I would sometimes double that up. Like if I was uh, giving a speech or presenting or going to a conference, I would <laughs> end up playing somewhere, uh, which was really kind of cool. I ended up randomly it's playing also, with a couple yeah. of different bands or sitting in. And um, I mean, music is is a universal language, and that's that's really what's one of the most exciting things about it. You can go anywhere and connect with people and communicate. Um, and uh, so it's it's such a key thing. Yeah, absolutely. I think the type of music you're making as well is just very universal. Like anybody's going to hear this and want to just sing along, just <laughs> bob their head. I love it. It's very happy music. And even if it's not happy, it's like great to listen to. Um, One, and, a friend of mine once told me that I was playing House of the Rising Sun. And he's like, you can play depressing songs and make them sound happy. <laughs> like, I know. It's like you've got a great like inflection. Like inflection. Your energy is great. Um, so for you, do you have a lot coming up next? Like what is your next project music wise? I know you've got a lot of time and you've got the space. So what yeah. are you planning on doing? Well, right now we're, we're hoping to um, launch another season of the Sound Space series videos. We have the streaming equipment. Um, we got a grant, which was really exciting. Uh, to get some equipment in there and uh, get the place up and running kind of a little bit uh, to the next level. Um, so I'm going to be working on that. Um, actually, Phil sent me a text before, the guy I keep talking about, and <laughs> and I may make him record some of these songs now that I've got your guys' approval on this. But yes. uh, <laughs> we do a lot of bartering. You know, I, I help him write <laughs> press releases and he does some recording for me and so forth and so it's on. happy... <laughs> Happy family at the sound space. I love that. Yeah. I'm really, it's really awesome you've got a space like that. Like, that's really cool. I want to just say one other quick thing about yeah. it that's really cool is that we have such a, uh, even though we only have five bands, it's a really broad spectrum of bands. We have, you know, one, one band that's a really like top notch professional rock band. We have one group that's a father and son that, that I'm convinced the, the wife kicked them out at some point and said, you got to play somewhere else, you know? And they show up every week and play, and we've got a ska band that shows up, and we've got a heavy metal band, and, you know, so it's just all this different stuff. Um, and so it's it's real exciting to see. Also to see them progress, because I've mm -hmm. had it open now at, at, since uh, November of last year is when I opened up eMusic. Um, so it's been cool to watch the bands kind of grow. It's very exciting. Um, for you, where does your musical inspiration usually come from? Like, what do you listen to a lot? What kind of music do you surround yourself with? And does it manifest in your music, or is it like just kind of very loose ties to inspiration? Believe it or not, I've I've always been a fan of Vermont music, and I've been really fortunate to connect with a lot of local musicians here in Vermont. Um, and for a while at, at the Rutland Herald, I was reviewing CDs, so I got to get all these CDs for free, which was really cool. Um, and you know, I, 
Um, also have been listening now a lot more to different community radio stations. Uh, we have a community radio station in Rutland now. Um, there's one in Royalton. Um, I'm going to be promoting you guys here too. So, <laughs> big heavy. <laughs> um, and it's it's so exciting to to hear uh, your friends and the, and the musicians that you know and play with on the radio. And um, so I'm you know I I could list names, but I'd get myself in trouble. But I, <laughs> <laughs> I definitely really am heavily influenced by the Vermont music scene. Awesome. And do you have any musicians that like you love to play with? Like, what kind of musicians do you like to play with? What do you look for in bandmates and things like that? Like, what kind of brings out your inspiration? Um. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I really it's it's fun to play with a rock band behind you. I have to say, you know, yeah. it's, it's a whole another level of like power. <laughs> um, at, on February first of this year, right, kind of before all the blank hit the fan you know yeah. <laughs> um i got to do a show um with my full band and if there's just something walking on stage with a full band and that uh and the chemistry that happens when you're when you're rocking out and stuff so yeah absolutely yeah it's great to have a lot of people around it feels foreign now but hopefully yeah. we'll be able to have yeah. big rock bands all together again but yeah. um for you like do you have any people in particular in your band that you've worked with for a really like long time? Are you all together like the same original people in your Misguided Angels, or is it kind of a rotating cast? It's it's definitely a rotating cast. The actually the kind of joke with uh, George's back pocket was when I did my album, I had twenty guest musicians, um, and we did the CD release party and then another concert, and I had so many musicians that we sold the the hall out and then we still lost money because they had to pay all the musicians <laughs> uh, so we paired the we paired the band down to a trio but that didn't last very long and it became whoever i could fit in my back pocket so um <laughs> i've i've been again really fortunate to play with a lot of really good musicians and and um what's interesting is it's kind of ironic that i have a rehearsal space because for years i didn't really record I mean, it didn't rehearse because I had so many musicians kind of to choose from that I could book a gig and kind of put a band together on the fly. Um, but having seen these other bands and how they've improved by rehearsing and stuff like that, it's, it's actually an inspiration to me. Um, so I'm trying to get my band back together and rehearsing in my own space, which would be a lot of fun. Yeah, and for you, like, what is your audience, if you played live, what does your audience kind of look like when you have a band or if you're by yourself? Like, old. We're just older. old. <laughs> old folks. <laughs> oh, I think kids would I'm love that. I love it. Yeah. I'm like <laughs> no, I, I I think it's fair enough to say that we, we do appeal to a fairly broad, broad cross-section of folks. I mean, I think people assume... Um, because I got long hair and a beard, that I'm just a strictly a folk musician, um, and I think that I, I do meld a lot of the different um, Americana type genres and jam genres, and um, so I think um, once people hear the music and the different stuff that I do, um, it brings a, a different crowd. I mean, it's it's another thing in Vermont that's worth noting is it's a it's a struggle even in good times to put on shows and do music and make it happen. So. Um, it's you know support of like places like Big Heavy World and other places are huge because um, you know we did that show in February and we we sold a hundred tickets but for me it's um it's this constant battle of uh, breaking even and on a good day and, and yeah. maybe making a couple bucks but it's a it's a challenge to make it all happen. Yeah, I kind of, on on that. Have you learned a lot, kind of, about the music industry from your work with like a sound space and also just as a musician? What have you learned? Do you have any tips for musicians out there? I know there's lots of struggling bands in Burlington. <laughs> Give them some tips. Yeah, I mean, I, I've I've been really fortunate to you know I've been able to actually work a little bit with the Paramount Theater in Rutland um, and the the city and booking some shows down there. Um, you know, I, I would say the one thing that I'm doing in, in putting on shows now that I really um, not recommend, but but people really need to do it, um, is, is to create your own budget and think about what you need to make and how you're going to make it. Because people don't like doing that type of thing, and it's boring, and nobody wants to talk about money. Um, but if you can learn how to do that um, and make it work. And, and the other thing is um, for shows, get sponsors. You know, people actually want to support the arts and they want to support music. And if you go out to sponsors and, and get that money ahead of time, then you're not freaking out the night of on your ticket sales and stuff like that. 
this is this is great advice my budget for bands is like how much does my instrument cost yeah. and then from there i'm like okay we'll figure it out yeah but yeah that's great advice thank you do you have some more songs for us can you sure i'd love yeah. to play some more songs play some more all right i'll even play some more happy ones yay <laughs> <laughs> we need some happiness you mentioned uh, misguided angels this is actually from the misguided angels uh album it's called rolling home If I couldn't laugh at joy, crying If I couldn't live at joy, dying If I couldn't sing, I wouldn't do a goddamn thing Well, I come rolling home to you Went out on the road and I was trying They told me I'd be big time, they was lying Every lie they sold, but I was buying. But now I'm rolling home to you. Just now my hat's in my hand. Won't you take me back again? Promise not to go out on that road. When I hear that whistle blow, don't you know it's time to go? Be back home, just give me one more show. If I couldn't laugh at your crying If I couldn't live at your dying If I couldn't sing, I wouldn't do a gosh darn thing Well, I come rolling home to you Every time I go, I hear you sighing Whenever I come home, I find you Crying before I hit the door, my tail is frying. But now I'm rolling home to you. If I couldn't laugh, I'd show me crying. If I couldn't live, I'd show me dying. If I couldn't sing, I wouldn't do a gosh darn thing. Rolling home to you. Yes, I come rolling home to you. Yes, I come rolling home to you. Oh, I like that one. That was great. <laughs> yeah, thanks. So, when you write songs, do you have like a favorite song? I want to like get a like whole story behind a song here. Sure, and I love to tell stories. Yes. So. <laughs> tell me some stories. <laughs> so I have I have this song called Traffic Lights, mm -hmm. and uh, I was coming back from my my buddy Marcos is a keyboard player who I play with, and um, he lives off of uh, Route 103, and 103 intersects 7, and Route 7 in Rutland, Vermont, has all these traffic lights all the way through town. <laughs> and uh, I came at the right time, and I hit all the traffic lights green all the way through town. And then I was like, I'm done. I can retire. It doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> Peak so I, I, wrote a song, I wrote a song called Traffic Lights. It's really big in East Wallingford right now. I don't know if you knew that. But yeah, interesting. <laughs> um, so for, you told me you've been playing like keyboard. You started out playing mm -hmm. piano. What kind of keeps you coming back to music? What made you take pick up the guitar? And like, do you think you're going to take up any more instruments? Or where do you think your musical journey is kind of taking you? I, I've really come to believe this sounds kind of hokey. I really have come to believe that I didn't choose to be a musician. Like, it chose me. Like, so many places along my life, um, just either doors opened up or things happened or I met people. Um, and my life was all kinds of all over the place for a while. Um, so I think, uh, you know, I, I kind of like um, stepping back from center stage a little bit and, and working. Uh, you know, I worked on my friend Jared's... Um, crew uh magnum pa for sound and stage um that kind of also helped me get going with the sound space so um i like helping other musicians um get up and going help them you know with a variety of stuff um and and just uh 
kind of watching them grow and helping them out. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you said you know the music industry pretty well I think having experience you probably know how to help other folks and get people started and I think the sound space it sounds like such a great um, project you have there like yeah I offer definitely. all kinds of unsolicited advice for people <laughs> that come in all of the advice for everyone it's great no people need it I think especially in Vermont in small places mm-hmm. where we just don't have a lot of opportunity most of the time you kind of have to make your own and it's great that you have provided that for a lot of folks and for you when you kind of are working with a lot of different musicians do you find that you are often inspired by the people you're working with like does it kind of have your has your sound changed since you've started working with all of these different musicians at a sound space yeah definitely and like i said it's very cool watching the different kind of styles and the different um different kind of bands that are in there now um and you know just watching you know their dedication and practice and uh, the first band that i had was this band called middle sun and they're kind of like a punk rock band and they came in and, you know, they would play the first half of their rehearsal. They would run through everything. They had its old material and then they would work on writing new material. And they were just dedicated. Every week they were in there um, working hard. So, I mean, their their work ethic was really impressive, um, which made me feel really lazy. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Thank you. laughs> but, yeah, I'm definitely, uh, I try to be open uh, and, you know, to a lot of different stuff at this point. That's awesome. Yeah, I think if you've been doing music, you said for like over 20 years, like, do you think you're going to keep evolving, keep going forward? Are you going to keep doing the same things or finding old things? Like, do you think your path, like you want to um, record a lot of your old stuff? Do you think you're going to kind of go in that direction? And greatest yeah, hits? <laughs> I, I hope so. The last the single that I did was kind of a, a I don't want to say it was overproduced. It was intentionally very produced as kind of like a pop song ish kind of thing um which again um was quite different than misguided angels um which was the more americana kind of thing so um having the opportunity to kind of play around with with the different toys in the studio um and different musicians that i get to work with um you know i think uh you know it is going to be a a a shift for me to um do some of the video work because that's something i have a little bit of experience um but there's a, a big learning curve with that Yes. Um, so uh, I have a feeling that's going to be kind of part of the direction I'm going to go. Awesome. And when you perform, do you kind of have like any really like you always play these certain songs? Do you have like a set list or do you always kind of just go around? Do you have a lot of different stuff to choose from at this point? I'm sure. So do you have any favorites you always like to play? Yeah, I, I you know, I um, definitely have songs that I fall back on that I, I like to play. And it, it kind of depends on where you're playing. I do play a lot of happy hour restaurant-y kind of gigs so um you kind of cater to to the crowd on that one um but you know then i kind of take songs and uh you know make them my own or change them a little bit or do something a little bit different and um and try to mix it up with songs that people are familiar with ones that they may not be and then toss in some of my originals here and there awesome do you have some more for us tonight sure sure i've got i've got plenty until you cut me off (laughs) (laughs) yeah go for it Uh, let's see All right. Oh, all good. You get that? <laughs> <laughs> Hydrate. <laughs> all right. This one's got a good story to it as well. This is a song I wrote for my brother, Chris, who's a couple years younger than me. And it's about the street we grew up on down in Bellows Falls, Vermont. It's called Griswold Drive. <laughs> Cigarettes and eating three day old birthday cake. I'd smile at my progress and laugh at my mistakes. Times go by, yeah, it's hard to comprehend. Just yesterday we was kids and now they call us men. Those were the days when we still could pretend back in the days. Grizz 
Griswold Drive Griswold Drive Fireflies in the summertime I was seven and you was only five Big wheels and bikes were all we could drive so good just to be alive back in the days of Chris Wall Drive. Buying baseball cards down at Fletcher's store. We'd sort them out on Mama's kitchen floor. Ride our bikes up to the wreck and we'd play some ball. Me, Sean, Seth, and JD were gonna whoop them all. That was the way that I do recall back in the days of Chris Wall Drive. We saw the Dunbars almost every day. We had the woods where we would play. We didn't have any bills to pay back in the days of Chris Wall Drive. You're hot in Phoenix and I'm cold here up in Vermont. Both pretty happy, there's not much that we want. These days I'd like to take that long, long ride And park my car up on Griswold Drive And dam up that brook just one more time Back in the days of Griswold Drive Griswold Drive, Griswold Drive In the summertime I was seven and you was only five Big wheels and bikes were all we could drive It felt so good just to be alive Back in the days of Chris Wall Drive The times we had up on Chris Wall Drive I wish I was Up on Chris Wall Drive That's such a sweet <laughs> song um, Thanks uh, Do you have any like favorite memories Of like one specific favorite memory Of performing or singing Or just doing something musical Like what's your number one memory Ah, uh, jeez Ah uh, I had this random memory of, I, I had this, uh, I guess you could call it a freak accident. I had the opportunity to open for Robert Randolph at the Paramount Theater. And actually the most exciting part was not being on stage, but seeing my guitar just sitting on the stand on stage and kind of knowing that I was going to like walk out there and, and pick the guitar up and and then puke. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Good stage, right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just have this kind of cool image in my head of that. It's that's like rock star energy. <laughs> I love that. Um, and I saw you have a Lifetime Achievement Award award from Cider Magazine. Can you tell me a little bit about that? That's like very cool. <laughs> I think it should have a little asterisk because uh, Cider Magazine was co-owned by my brother, Chris. So. <laughs> oh, well, it's a Lifetime Achievement Award. Tell but me about it. <laughs> um, uh, Cider Magazine was a very cool uh, project uh, that my brother, Chris, and his friend, Brian, started. Um, a couple of years back, and I'll have to be the first to admit that I was a bit of a naysayer, um, but they did a phenomenal job um, with that magazine and uh, cover, covered Southern Vermont and Southern New Hampshire um, and did a really great job um, featuring bands. They had a calendar. They did, you know, all kinds of articles from local bands, even got one of the some crazy monster band guy to do a column in there <laughs> guar somebody from guar i think or something Whoa. <laughs> so it was kind of all over the map but it was a super cool uh thing and uh they kind of tricked me into the award because i was helping give awards and so <laughs> when i opened the envelope for 
Lifetime Achievement Award, there was a blank piece of paper in there. And I was like, kind of like stuttering and stalling. And then Chris and Brian came out and they started yelling at me. And I was like freaking out. <laughs> and then they're like, the award's for you. <laughs> um, I you know, I think uh, the one thing I, I'm, I'm very proud of is that I have been involved in a lot of different aspects of, of the music scene, um, in particular down in Rutland, but in Vermont. Um, I've hosted a gazillion open mic nights. Um, I've organized singer-songwriter contests. Um, I've got, you know, you know, banged heads with the Paramount to finally get bands in there for our series that we did, the 802 concert series down there. Jim drove all the way down there for that one. <laughs> and uh, so I just love being involved. Like, I want to do it all. I want to be involved. I want to learn how to do sound. I want to play guitar. I want to, you know book bands, I want to promote bands, whatever, whatever is there that, that I can do to help out, um, I, I try to help out with it. Yeah. Do you have any personal goals for like your kind of music career, like where you want to go? Do you have any, like, this is what I want to do, like, I want to play at this place, like, do you have one thing that's like your goal you've always been working towards, or is it kind of like an enigma that's just growing and figuring it out? Well, I, believe it or not, like, ac actually, when I played that Harvest Moon Festival, I was just in awe that I, I got there and got to play there um, just because that's where all of my friends had played and all these great bands and I'd gone and seen these bands and to be asked to play that for me was just a huge honor um, so everything else is icing on the cake that's awesome. um, and I think uh, like I said I I, uh, I love kind of now being more backstage and helping bands out and helping uh, things move along I got to uh, work for the Stowe Jazz Fest a couple summers ago um, on the on the stage and sound crew, and that was just fun too to learn something new. And um, you know, as far as, as my music and where it, it goes, I you know I I uh, I just want to keep keep writing and keep playing. And and uh, I I don't have any uh, huge pie in the sky goals. I I'll play cover songs uh, at a happy hour for Flatlanders all day long if that's what they <laughs> if they're gonna you know pay me a couple bucks yeah. and give me a beer. I'll do that. You know. Uh, I, I just love playing music. Yeah, absolutely. And you're great at it. Thank you so Thank much you. for yeah. sharing your music with us. Can you tell our listeners where they can find your music, what platforms you're on, and where they can find either your bands, you, sure. everything? Yeah, so uh, my website is uh, George's Back Pocket, all one word, dot com. Um, you can look up a sound space um, on Facebook. Um, that's the best place to find it. Um, I'm also on Facebook as George Nostrand. Um, I'm terrible at branding. I had my first album was George by George, then the next one was George's Back Pocket, and then it was Misguided Angels. So, like, trying to find my stuff, like, you know, on CD Baby or something, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> they will look for you. Right. But can you play me one more song? Sure. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Thanks. All right. <laughs> This is a song about healthy living. Bottom of the bottle comes too soon. Bottom of the bottle comes too soon. Even though I started drinking out quarter to noon, well, the bottom of the bottle comes too soon. Bottom of the bag is such a drag. Bottom of the bag is such a drag. Even though that stuff makes me call hack and gag, well, the bottom of the bag is such a drag. Well, people tell me I should try to slow down, find a place and learn to settle down. If I live my life on the edge of a night, I'll never be dull to hang around. The bottom of the bottle comes too soon. The bottom of the bottle comes too soon. Even though I started drinking about quarter to noon, well, the bottom of the bottle comes too soon. It's where the fiddle player plays. Now the banjo. <laughs> the end of the weekend comes too fast. The end of the weekend comes too fast. Even though by Monday I'm running out of 
gas Well, the end of the weekend comes too fast Bottom of the bottle comes too soon Bottom of the bottle comes too soon Even though I started drinking about quarter to noon Well, the bottom of the bottle comes too soon Even though I started drinking about quarter to noon Well, the bottom of the bottle comes too soon <laughs> Thank you so much, George. Everybody, Thank you. that was George Nostrand, and this has been Rocket Shop. Thanks so much for listening, and come back next week to listen to the Lemon Flyers on 105.9 FM, The Radiator, W O M M L P, Burlington. Thanks, y'all. <laughs>